all the regions. I want to know what he taught. Well, he comes home, he goes, into, he goes to church, and there they delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now, it was literally a scroll. If you're reading the Amplified, it'll say he unrolled the book, but you know, you don't unroll the book there. He unrolled the scroll. He unrolled the book, uh, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, he was reading from the book of Isaiah, what we know of today as Isaiah 61 and 1. So he unrolled it, and this is what he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it again to the minister, sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now let's see what happened here. They gave him the scroll. Now R.W. Schambach was explaining this uh, to me where in those days, the rabbi, they would read up to a certain point, And when they stopped, they would pin that point to pick up the next time they met. <laughs> well, before this Sunday where Jesus showed up, they read all the way down to Isaiah 61 and 1. And they were led to stop right there because only God knew who was going to show up at church next week. <laughs> then Jesus shows up. They hand him the book and he reads. Oh, oh, they hand him the book. He opens the scroll and he finds himself in the scripture. How many of you know it's time for us to find ourselves in the scripture? Glory to God. He found himself in the scripture and he read that scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. And then in verse 21, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, he says, what I have read to you, I'm it. And now let's back up because that's a heavy statement. Let's see what he said about himself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, how many of you know you can't separate the spirit of the Lord from the anointing of God? When the spirit of the Lord shows up, the anointing of God shows up. The anointing is not a, it or uh, some stuff. The anointing is the personality of the Holy Spirit. A personality is what constitutes an individual's uniqueness. It's what makes you who you are. The anointing makes the Holy Ghost who he is. When the Holy Ghost shows up, the anointing shows up. Everywhere in the Old Testament, you read the Spirit of God coming upon anybody, that anointing was on them to do things they couldn't do in their natural. The Spirit of God got on uh, Elijah and he outran the chariot and beat Ahab into the entrance of Jezreel. The anointing of God and the Spirit of God cannot be separated. When he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, what he was also saying is the anointing is upon me. What he was also saying is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God is upon me. That's what he showed up announcing that day. The burden removing, yoke destroying power of God is upon me. I know, watch this. The spirit of the Lord or the anointing of God or the burden removing yoke destroying power of God is upon me because he has painted on me. He's smeared on me. He's anointed me. He's overshadowed me with what? The spirit of the Lord. With the burden removing yoke destroying power of God. All right, now watch this. To preach the gospel. All right, now follow me here now. Now, what is the word gospel? What does that word mean in the Greek? Good news. I used to settle for that, but now I don't. Not just good news. For years, you've been asking people, what's the gospel? Good news. <laughs> what's the gospel? Oh, that's easy, the good news. Huh. Uh, what we have been saying when we said the good news, what we've really been implying is that the gospel is the good news, the whole Bible. Folks, let me tell you something now. 
this may come to it as a shock to you. This Bible has good news in it. Oh yes, amen. But it also has some bad news in it. <laughs> so we, we're not talking about this whole book. And then there's a lot of different good news in here. So it seems to me like somebody should be asking what good news? Pastor, if I came up to you and I said, uh, uh, Doc, I got some good news for you. I'll see you later. You ain't gonna let me get out of the room without asking me, what's the good news? What's the good news? What good news? What, what, what's the good news? Well, listen, Jesus is the one that's talking. Somebody said, how do you know Jesus said this? It's in the red. Oh, oh, no, I know it was Jesus because when I read it, I felt something in the city of my soul. Hallelujah. No, no, it's in the red. Now, listen, since he's the one coming saying, I've got good news, then the good news would be what's coming out of his mouth. Well, what came out of his mouth? I'm anointed. <laughs> Now, hold on. Well, he's anointed him to preach the good news to the poor. Well, what's the good news to the poor? Oh, now, y'all trying to use that definition on me. Now, now, what have you said the good news to the poor is? You don't have to be poor no more. Ain't that what you said? Ain't that? And then what you said? Good news to the poor is, is you don't have to be poor no more. You don't have to be poor no more. Well, before I talk about that, in Georgia, we have something a, a little lower than, uh, 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 one level lower than poor. We call it po. <laughs> That's that government e eating cheese uh, where you take that knife and put that cheese on, uh, your, the knife on the cheese and you put all your weight on it to try to slice it. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know about that. The, uh, the can of peanut butter where you have to take the peanut butter out and put it in the pan and melt it down before you can spread it. Y'all don't know nothing about that up here. But uh, I saw this example, me knocking on the door, knock, knock, knock. Hello, my name's Creflo Dollar. I got good news for you. You don't have to be poor no more. Bye-bye. How many of you know the poor man ain't laughing? But now watch this. Knock, knock, my name's Creflo Dollar. I've got a million dollars here. You can take, care, take the million dollars and you can pay your bills off and get out of poverty and you don't have to be poor no more. Bye bye. How many of you know the poor man in the street dancing now? The good, the good news to the poor man is not you don't have to be poor no more. The good news to the poor man is I've got what you need to remove your burden of debt and to destroy your yoke of poverty. The gospel is the good news of Jesus being anointed with the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. That is the gospel. The gospel is not just good news. The gospel is the good news about Jesus being anointed. The gospel is the good news about Jesus having on him burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. The gospel is the good news to everybody with burdens. Hey, Jesus got the burden removing power. The gospel, uh, the good news to everybody that has yokes is Jesus has the power to destroy your yokes. The gospel is the word on Jesus being anointed with the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. And he said, the good news that I've been anointed to preach is that I'm anointed so that I can heal the broken heart, so I can deliver the captive, so I can give sight back to the blind, so I can set at liberty to them that are bruised, and so I can preach the acceptable year of the Lord to those who need some favors profusely and excessively and lavishly to abound towards them, and I am anointed to cause it to come to pass. That is the gospel. From this day forward, Understand when you say, I am preaching the gospel, are you preaching the good news about Jesus being anointed to remove burdens and destroy yokes? Because if we don't preach it, our churches won't hear it. And if they won't hear it, they won't have faith. 
that their burdens can be removed and their yokes can be destroyed. Listen to me. I'm going to go even, even deeper than this. And I'm going to say something and you give me a chance, I'm going to prove it. When Jesus came to this planet, he did not have waiting in reserve 12 men who had graduated from seminary school. When Jesus showed up, he gathered together the dirty dozen. <laughs> enrolled him, them into his life as a school. And for three and a half years, they were with him and they only heard one message. And that message is how he is anointed to remove burdens and to destroy yokes. That's all he ever preached everywhere he went. That's all he ever preached. How he's anointed to remove burdens and to destroy yoke. He preached it, then he demonstrated it. He preached how he was anointed to remove burdens and destroy yokes. Then the Holy Ghost showed up and manifested. He preached it and Holy Ghost manifested. He preached it and the Holy Ghost manifested. Somebody said, well, what happened? Where are the signs and where are the miracles? How come the Holy Ghost don't do like it used to do? Cause the message ain't going forth like it used to go forth. The disciples only preached what they heard. In fact, everybody in the New Testament only preached the same message that Jesus preached. <laughs> I'm gonna show, oh, I ain't trembling because I'm going to show it to you. That's the only message he ever preached. The message about how he's anointed to remove burdens and destroy yokes. I'll never forget when I heard uh, a man say what Gandhi said. He said, if the world could meet the Christ of Christianity, they would receive him. But the world has met the Christians of Christ, and that's why they've not received him. What does that mean? If the world could meet the anointed one and his anointing, if they could meet the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power, they would receive him. But they've not met the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. They've met the Christians with no burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. And they've not received him because they've not seen their burdens removed and their yokes destroyed. But when they see their burdens removed and their yokes destroyed, they will receive the anointed one and his anointing. And we're going around here preaching sermons to try to get a 10 rating. We're trying to be so original so we can say, God gave me that. Can I go on? Can we just, for 20 minutes, let's just go to school here. Let me finish this little chapter out real quick, and then I'm going to take you through the New Testament and show you that's what everybody preached. His disciples preached it, and then their disciples preached it. Everybody preached it. Same message. But it's been disguised in something that I need to reveal to you. Come on, let's go down here. When Jesus announced in verse 21 that this day this is fulfilled in your ears, you would think they would throw a party and celebrate. Our burdens are being ready to remove, our yokes are being ready to be destroyed, but they didn't do that. Notice what they did in verse 22, and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? He shows up saying, I'm gonna remove your burdens and destroy your yokes. They said, is not this Joseph's boy? Isn't this the carpenter that was working on the barn down on the corner? That's Mary's boy. We grew up together. We live in the same neighborhood. What was going on? They heard about Jesus being anointed, but they refused to honor that anointing on his life. And because their unbelief was there, they didn't believe he was anointed to remove burdens and destroy yokes. He couldn't do very many miracles there, but heal a few sick folks. What's going on here? To the degree that you honor the anointing on your man or woman of God is to the degree that you will receive from that anointing. Amen. To the degree that you will honor the anointing on that man and woman of God is to the degree that you'll receive from that anointing. If uh, you members of this church, if you just see uh, your pastor as Larry, Amen. that's a Larry. Amen. Yeah, we know Larry. No, that ain't no anointed man. That's just Larry. Amen. 